So Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, went after the NRA uh, after the shooting that happened in New Zealand. Uh, that shooting, of course, leave, uh, left about 49 people dead. Uh, now, her uh, criticism on Twitter came from this. Uh, she said, at first I thought of saying, imagine being told your house of faith isn't safe anymore. But I couldn't say imagine. Charleston, Pittsburgh, Sutherland Springs. Uh, those are all places, of course, where right, uh, you know, uh, right-wing white radical terrorists attacked people of color, attacked Muslims. Uh, now, she said, what good are your thoughts and prayers when they don't even keep the pew safe? So, I, look, um, she's, of course, referring to what the NRA says every time there's a mass shooting in America. Oh, we're sending thoughts and prayers. We're sending thoughts and prayers. Well, thoughts and prayers don't do anything because we've been having thoughts and prayers for a long time and we continue to have mass shootings at least every time at what every couple months probably more stuff that we don't even hear about because it's so commonplace down in america those thoughts and prayers hey you know if thoughts and prayers work so well then why don't we use thoughts and prayers at the border and stop this emergency we all know it doesn't work um you know what that actually does work though uh in the case of mass shootings Gun control measures. In fact, New Zealand is looking at doing more gun control measures. Uh, but, Jeff, you might say, New Zealand has gun control. They've got stricter gun control than we do. That may be the case, but, again, remember, no gun control is 100% effective. So, that doesn't mean, however, that you can't institute measures of gun control. Because, look, this is the first mass shooting in New Zealand since 1985. Literally over 30 years since their last mass shooting. And in reality, of course, this was a coordinated, planned terrorist attack. It's very difficult to foil those kind of things. Um, whereas, of course, our last mass shooting was like a couple of weeks ago. I don't even know. But our biggest mass shooting, at least that I can recall, uh, was... In Las Vegas, the Las Vegas massacre, forty—I'm uh, sorry, fifty-nine people were killed and over five hundred were injured in that shooting. Um, so, I guess that's the most comparable one. And we just had that two years ago. And what their last mass shooting was over thirty years ago, thirty-four, I believe. So, their argument of, well, I mean, look, they've got gun control and they still have mass shootings. Well, that's crap. The reason that there are so few mass shootings everywhere else and all these other countries that do have gun control measures uh, is that they do have gun control measures. They have more than we do. So it is less likely to have a mass shooter. So, uh, but here's the other thing, right? So now in the manifesto, this shooter basically said, well, we start, need to start having a conversation on gun control because if we do, the left is going to overreach and we're going to tear ourselves apart. Well, and that's the whole point. So, yes, in addition to needing gun control measures here in the United States that are common sense, we also need to have a conversation about white supremacy. So, and that is the bigger issue. The guy was a white supremacist. He hated Muslims. Um, he idolized Donald Trump. Wanted to inspire a, a race war. Um, and so, look, you read through that manifesto, and what's the thing that keeps coming up in between some of the trolling stuff? Well, you have the issue of white genocide. They're coming to replace us. The immigrants are coming. They're crossing the border, and they're, and they're making our country less safe. Look, I just uh, committed a mass shooting because uh, it's so unsafe. But, you know, you're the one that's making it unsafe. You're making it unsafe for the Muslims. <laughs> I mean, look... It's a conspiracy, right, to that. And, and unfortunately, the right wing talks about this conspiracy all the time. A again, you have got figures on the alt-right and on the alt-light. Uh, and you've got, you know, Republicans talking about it. Steve, even Steve King is talking about, well, we need to get those white birth rates up in Europe because they're going to get overrun with Muslims. Candace Owens had a tweet where she's like, French people 
need, French people need to have more babies or else they're going to become a Muslim nation. And you think that's not stoking the fires? They abso it, it absolutely is. Absolutely is. So the idea that we need to stop immigration from Muslim countries uh, and start having more non-Muslim babies. And of course, what they usually mean by that is white babies. That's, that is racist rhetoric. That is white supremacist rhetoric. I mean, it's ridiculous, right? And of course, the callbacks to what the, what the Muslims are destroying Western civilization. And of course, they get this stuff from people like Janine Pirro. Janine Pirro went after Ilhan Omar, accusing her of loyalty to Sharia law over America. So don't pretend that we have a, don't have an issue with white supremacy and racism and hatred. We do. We do. And of course, a lot of that is fear, predicated on fear of being replaced or fear of just, just fear. And in this case, fear the other, fear the Muslims, right? Uh, and of course, unfortunately, a lot of politicians, a lot of right-wing pundits, they make money off this fear. It's a great way to make money. So you've got a lot of people that are using this fear of Muslims and fear of pretty much everything to make a buck. And it's really sickening because it ends up leading to stuff like this. So, and in the case of the NRA, getting back to them, the NRA, they're backed by the gun manufacturers, right? And so they get a lot of money from the gun manufacturers and the gun manufacturers get a lot of money from selling guns. More fear equals more guns sold. More guns sold equals more shootings. More shootings equals more fear. And more fear, of course, goes back to buying more guns. Uh, and it's a very unvirtuous cycle. And, of course, at the end, they make more profit. And that's what this is about. And this is, it's disgusting. And so that's how this kind of all ties in. Now back to AOC. Now she tweeted also something positive. Uh, gave a lot of praise, of course, to the New Zealand Prime Minister. Uh, by the way, it's pretty awesome. Um, but she said, quote, This is a time of great vulnerability for our communities. We must come together and fight for each other and stand up for our neighbors. Isolation, dehumanize, uh, dehumanizing stereotypes, hysterical conspiracy theories, and hatred ultimately lead to the anarchy of violence. We cannot stand for it. And I agree. We cannot, in the United States, stand for this or not in the world. We have to stand up to fascism and it's all, of, all of its forms, whether it be white supremacy or Indian supremacy or whatever supremacy, right? And actually learn to get along with each other uh, without dividing ourselves with ridiculous, arbitrary hatred. Because if we don't, in the end, that hatred's going to destroy us. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.